everybody. Happy Wax on Wednesdays. Today I'm going to show you a great finish for watercolors, which of course is encaustic. So, so I'm starting out here with Arches watercolor paper and I've done stacks and stacks of these little floral uh, florals in a vase. And so I'm going to just jump right in here and I'm using the Decadent Pie uh, watercolors and also a Jane Davenport uh, little kit of watercolors there and I'm going to I'll post those in on the blog post exactly all of the supplies that I use today and exactly the color palettes and everything I'll post on the blog post on the website for today so you can see exactly what I used but the watercolors I'm using are really not expensive and especially I think the Jane Davenport's are available at Mike goals if you or they used to be uh, if you have a coupon you can use your weekly coupon and um, I think the decadent pie I got on probably Amazon and so they're they're not expensive the arches watercolor paper is um, is pretty expensive as far as watercolor paper goes but it's great paper uh, to use for both watercolors and encaustic so a two for there and I am NOT by any means a watercolor artist um, this is not a tutorial on how to uh, paint with watercolors, but, but I love painting and I love playing around with watercolors. And uh, it's one of my favorite little things to do. I used to keep a little uh, watercolor journal with me when I traveled, so it's fun. And these little tins are perfect, uh, little travel tins to take with you um, if you need a little art on the go. So um, I'm just having some fun painting um, little tiny uh, little flower works on all of these uh, little pieces of paper here and just trying them out trying different flowers see what works and the great thing about this is is aside from the, the arches watercolor paper being a little bit expensive um, you can you're not committed here to uh, if something goes wrong or you um, end up n not caring for it, not liking it, you're just practicing painting flowers. So there's no commitment here because you have not yet mounted uh, this piece. And this is the great thing about finishing your watercolors uh, with encaustic is when you finally get through, you know, painting four or six or eight or ten of these uh, florals and you pick out your favorite one or two or however many then you can go ahead and mount them to a cradle board and finish them with encaustic so right now there's no risk no worry uh, you're just playing around and having a lot of fun exploring uh, with these watercolors and as you saw in the beginning of the video I had all sorts of shapes of paper and some of them were just scraps of the Arches watercolor paper that I would used for other projects little scraps I always save the scraps of that paper so maybe I want to practice some flowers or some leaves on them and I always save all those good scraps of the Arches watercolor so I did all different sizes at first then I sort of narrowed down which flowers I wanted to use for sure and now I'm working on the size that I'm going to go ahead and mount on the cradle board so this is an 8 by 8 so I did a few of these as well um, these little 8 by 8s I just simply traced the board onto the paper and cut it out and now they are ready to roll and ready to mount once the watercolor is done And the brush I'm using today is a super inexpensive uh, brush as well. I got them in a whole pack of round brushes, but it's a big juicy, like a size 14, I think, uh, big juicy brush so I don't get too uh, too involved there in um, tiny little things. I keep going on these um, kind of just fun, make the florals just fun and loose and uh, and keep going and uh, you know a big juicy round brush is very versatile you can use the point you can use the whole brush you can uh, make it do a lot of things for you so round brushes are definitely always my favorite um, usually I my favorite is a 12 this is a 14 so it's a little bit bigger but just a nice juicy round brush and this is an inexpensive brush as opposed to an expensive watercolor brush it just came in a set but it still is a watercolor brush and specifically for um, watercolor for use in watercolors and I do find I will say that I do find that um, in the case of watercolors that um, a finer brush 
Um, sometimes, you know, more expensive brand, more expensive brush is worth it when it comes to the watercolors because um, especially um, I love using round brushes and it's my favorite kind of go-to brush somewhere, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14 sizes. And um, I find that the more, um, even though they're a little bit more pricey, uh, the nicer brand of, of watercolor brushes are uh, well worth it if you're really painting some fine detail. These are just little fun loose floral, florals and it's fine. But if you really, um, to avoid frustration, if you're really getting into some um, some detail work, you want that brush really to work well for you, then making that little investment into, you know, a couple of really good brushes of your, your favorite size is well worth it. So this little floral is almost done. And of course, this is a sped up video. So um, you didn't see all of the drying time in between all those layers, which is the fun part of painting with watercolor is all the details that you can add in with those fun layers. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up and then we can go ahead and mount this onto a wood cradle board that I've already uh, taped off the sides and the edges and got it prepared for the encaustic. To mount this Arches watercolor paper on the board, I'm going to go ahead and use PVA glue or book binders glue. I'm pretty liberal with the amount of glue that I use. I would rather have some squish out the sides than not have enough glue. And I'm also very quick about it so it doesn't start to dry on me because I don't want to take a chance that there's any part that this heavy paper is not going to adhere to. And I'm putting a paper in between my brayer and the finished painting because my brayers are usually pretty messy. This process does take quite a few minutes. I turn the painting every which way and really go over it with some good pressure to make sure that there's no air bubbles in there. And then I put a little weight on it, maybe a book for it to dry. And a little fun tip here. When I uh, go to trim it, I don't trim it with a blade. I trim it with sandpaper. I just simply um, get some fine grit sandpaper and sand the edges smooth and I like mine to look like it's always been part of that wood that piece so I go as far as to also sand the corners and I often do this on my photo encaustic as well and that way it looks like one seamless piece it doesn't look like a piece of watercolor heavy watercolor paper mounted on a board and of course the thicker the paper the longer it's going to take to trim up with sandpaper but that few minutes of extra work and attention to detail really makes a difference in that finished look. And a lot of times I take just a block, a sandpaper block that's a little bit finer in grit and just really finish those edges and integrate them into the piece. And now comes the fun part. I'm going to clean this off with a soft cloth and make sure there's no sandpaper residue left on my painting and go ahead and begin adding that luscious encaustic beeswax. This is beeswax mixed with Damar resin, which is going to give it its forever finish. And I'm going to go ahead and add three thin coats of this fusing in between each layer. And I'm going to fuse with my heat gun and not my torch because this is a paper on top of the wood cradle and you can see even after that first layer there's still some paper that's left exposed so I don't want to get out a live flame. I'm going to go ahead and use my heat gun on the low setting and after each encaustic layer that I add I'm going to fuse and bond it to the previous layer underneath and this is going to give it a just that creamy dreamy wonderful finish and then I'll wait overnight and buff it with a soft cloth to a really high lacquer-like shine. And that's the great thing about encaustic. You can leave it this matte, beautiful matte finish or buff it up to a shiny finish. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this process and we will see you next Wednesday. Happy Wax on Wednesdays and happy creating, guys.